Hello everyone, I'm James and in this hopefully short video, I will show you how you can run a fixed grid strategy through Hummingbot. So in this talk, um, I will first talk about what exactly a fixed grid strategy is and how it works and when it's profitable. And once we go through that, I will get into actually running a fixed grid strategy using Hummingbot scripts. Okay, so let's first um, talk a little bit about the fixed grid strategy. So I'm going to um, use a chart to, to, to talk about this. Um, so what we are looking at here is the play USDT pair on a Sendex. Um, so this is actually an example of a bot that I've been running for the past 10 days or so. Um, so I thought it'd be nice to use this as an example. So how exactly does the grid strategy work? Um, the first thing is we define a floor and a ceiling price for the grid. Okay, and so we have the ceiling and the floor, and then we are going to define a number of levels at which the limit orders are going to be placed. Right, so based on where the current price is, the orders above the current price are going to be sell orders, and the orders below the current price are going to be buy orders. Okay, and the price difference between any two consecutive grid levels is what we call the spread of the grid. Okay, and one thing that's important to keep in mind is that um, the spread should be large enough so that you're not losing money on the fees, right? So for example, here um, in this board that I've been running, um, you can see that the floor is at 0 0.07 and the ceiling is at 0 0.077 and I've been using 10 grid levels. So that gives me a spread of something like 1%. Um, so the buy and sell fees on Ascendex are 0.2% each. So I'm still profitable overall since the total fees for a buy plus sell is 0.4% whereas my spread is greater than that. It's 1%, right? So this is something that you should always keep in mind when designing um, a grid strategy. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of what this strategy is, let's talk about when it's going to be profitable and how to use it successfully. Okay, so what we ideally want is for the price to be contained within this ceiling and flow levels and for it to be volatile. So we want it to move around a lot, but still stay within the ceiling and the floor. So this chart over here is a fair example of that. So it's not the best example, but it's a decent example. So you can see that the price is staying within um, the grid levels and it's also moving around quite a bit. So it hits a lot of the limit orders that we are placing in this grid. Okay, so what happens when the price moves out beyond the ceiling? So in this case, um, this is basically a long grid since we are on spot. Um, so we would still be profitable if the price exceeds the ceiling, but the profit would be smaller than if we had simply bought and held, right? And if the price goes below the flow level, then we are going to be at a loss. Okay, so this is how the grid strategy works. and. Um, so these are the things to keep in mind when you're actually putting in the parameters. Okay, so like I said, I've actually been running this strategy for like a little more than 10 days now, and I'd like to show you the performance of my run so you can get an idea of how this works. Um, so what we are looking at here is the Hummingbot dashboard. I'm using that to analyze the performance, and this is the strategy performance page. Um, so let's go through these statistics here. So I've been running it for 364 hours and the price has actually dropped by 8% in this time. Um, but still we are at a positive net PNL because the price has been moving around and hitting a lot of the grid levels. Um, so we've made a total of 167 trades and we've generated a total trade volume of something like 13,000 um, USDT. Okay, and I've actually been using very small order amounts of this, so just something like five USDT per um, grid level. So this is quite a large bit of volume um, that has been generated, right? So this here shows the 
candlestick chart for the play USDT pair and we have the trades plotted on the candlesticks. Okay, so those are the green and the red triangles um, in the chart above. So the curly bracket on the left shows the range of the grid. So the floor and the ceiling level. So you can see that all the trades are actually contained within this level. So the price has been moving around and we've been generating a number of trades here. The chart on the bottom shows the PNL. Um, so this has been um, increasing basically. There have been some drawdowns because of the large drop in the price of the asset itself. Um, but still overall, it's at a net positive PNL here. Okay. Okay, so hopefully that gives an idea of the fixed grid strategy and how it works. And now let's actually go ahead and talk about how to run the strategy using Hummingbot scripts. All right. So in this folder now, I have a Docker Compose file um, to start my Hummingbot instance. And I have the script file, the fixedgrid.py. Let's first open up the script file and look at all the parameters within. Okay, so scrolling down here. So the stuff you see here within the dashed red lines is the list of parameters that needs to be modified. Okay, first you have some parameters that are compulsory, which need to be provided for any run that you are doing. So we have the trading pair, and this is the same example that I've been using here in this video. So it's play USDT. The exchange is Ascendex. Um, like I said, we've been running this with 10 levels and the grid ceiling is at 0 0.077 and the grid floor is at 0 0.07. And we've been using an order amount of 80 of the base asset play, which equates to just a little bit over five USDT at the current price. Okay, so apart from these important parameters, we also have some optional parameters that you can use according to your strategy. So we have a spread scale factor and an amount scale factor. So these factors are used to scale the spread or the amount as you move from the center of the grid to the outer parts of the grid, right? So for example, if you have a spread scale factor which is greater than one, then we are going to have a small spread near the center of the grid and the spread is, is going to increase according to this factor as we move away from the center, right? So it's going to be a scale factor. And the same thing for the amount. So you can use this to set up a geometric progression for the spread or for the amount, the order amount in the grid, right? So these um, features are also offered by the grid bots that you see on Binance and other platforms. So you also have some trading platforms like Bitsgap and Three Commas, which offer these grid bots, which have these features. And so you can also use them here within Hummingbot. So the nice thing about running this on Hummingbot is that we have access to all the connectors that Hummingbot provides, right? So you can run this fixed grid strategy on a huge number of exchanges and a huge number of tokens. And it can even be used on DEXs, which use order books. Okay, so next we have the rebalance order type and the rebalance order spread. So these are used when we start the grid. So for example, um, suppose all the assets in my account are in USDT and I'm starting somewhere at the center of the grid, I need to rebalance my inventory for the grid to run properly, right? Because we need um, quota set to place buy orders below the current price and we need base asset to place sell orders above the current price. So the, this script will do that automatically for you. When you start the grid, if the inventory is not correctly aligned, it's going to do a rebalancing um, operation. So you can do that either as a limit order or a market order. So that's the rebalance order type. And if you do do it as a limit order, then you can provide a spread um, for the order to be placed, right? So here it's 0 0.02. And the rebalance order refresh time is the time in which this order is going to be refreshed if it's a limit order again. Um, so here we are using 60 seconds for that. And then we have a grid orders refresh time. So 
once the rebalance operation is done and the grid is set up, there's really no need to keep refreshing the grid, right? So that's why I've set it to a very large number over here. Um, but if you do want to keep refreshing the grid orders for whatever reason, um, you can do that by setting a smaller time interval over here. Okay, and finally we have the price source. So this is um, the pr source that is used to calculate the current price, right, in the grid operation. So here we are using mid price. You can also use the last price or any of the other prices available within Hummingbot. So that's it. These are all the parameters um, that you can use to set up the grid bot. Okay, now let's actually go ahead and run some example. Um, so I've been looking at some charts on Ascendex and this one looks good to me for a grid bot. So this is ENJ USDT and I am going to try and set up a grid board between some ceiling and floor levels over here. So let's choose the floor at maybe 0 0.3. Um, let me see if I can draw this here. So we'll set up a floor at 0 0.3. Um, and the ceiling we can maybe set it at 0 0.33. Okay, so let's set up a grid bot that runs within these um, range of prices, okay? And again, I'll use 10 grid levels so that the spread for the grid is something like 1% again. So that's going to be greater than the fees, right? So let me go back and edit this for the new bot that we are going to set up. So we are doing ENJ USDT on Ascendix. The number of levels is still 10. Our ceiling price is 0 0.33 and the flow price is 0 0.3, right? So yeah, that's what we had there. Um, the order amount, I, I want it to be something just above five USDT, which is the minimum order size on Ascendix. So maybe I'll use 18 over here. Okay, and I don't want to have any kind of scaling for the spread or the amount at the moment. So I'm just going to leave this at one and we'll go ahead and use a limit order to rebalance the inventory. And all these other optional parameters are fine. So I think we can go ahead with this. Okay, so let's save this. Um, let me now open up the Docker Compose. So our container name here is HB Grid Demo. And this is a very simple um, instance, right? So we don't need the gateway or anything over here. So it's just a simple Hummingbot container. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. So I'll start up the Docker instance and we'll attach to the container that we just opened up now. So it was HP grid demo. All right. Um, so I've already entered in the keys for my Ascendix account here. So let's go ahead and first check the balance. Um, so we have 50 USDT on this account and that should be sufficient for the grid that I'm going to be running now. Um, now, one thing I forgot to do is actually copy the script over into Hummingbot files. So let me just, um, we don't need to exit. I'll just, okay. So I will just copy over our script file to Hummingbot files scripts. And now we can attach to our container again and try to run this. Okay, so let's say start script fixgrid.py. So let's see what happens here. So it's saying that we have insufficient ENG balance for the bot and that's because our entire inventory is in USDT, right? So it's attempting to do a rebalance operation. So in the log here, it says that the initial level is five. So we need some ENG for the sell orders um, that are to be placed above the current price, right? So that's what it's doing now. It's placing a buy order to rebalance. Um, so we can see a limit order has been placed 
to acquire the correct amount of inventory that's required for the grid board. Now, this might take a few minutes um, to get filled. So let's just wait for that. All right, so I had this running for some time, allowing it to fill the rebalance order. And now the rebalance order has been filled. Um, in the meanwhile, I actually changed the number of grid levels to eight because I realized I didn't have enough inventory to do 10 grid levels here. Um, so it's um, eight levels and we are currently on the fourth grid level, right? And the rebalance operation has happened. And now in the status, we can see our buy and sell orders for the grid. Okay, so let's just look at this. So the status shows us some parameters about the grid. It shows us our current assets and it also shows us the orders that are now on the exchange. So if we go over to the exchange, we can see our orders here as well. Okay, so this is the fixed grid strategy. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on the Hummingbird Discord and we can talk about it some more. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.